In this video, we would look at electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Before we begin, let's just refresh our memory about the mitochondrial structure. So mitochondria has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. The inner membrane is invaginated, forming the Christi or Christa. And in between these two membranes, there is an intermembrane space. Inside the intermembrane, inner membrane, there is mitochondrial matrix. Now inside the matrix, there is DNA and ribosomes. Now let's talk about the inner membrane and the components in the inner membrane because inner membrane is pretty dif different from the outer membrane. And inner membrane has the electron transport chain and the machinery for ATP production, the ATP synthase. So let me introduce you to the components of the electron transport chain. There are four different complexes named as NADH dehydrogenase or the complex 1, succinate dehydrogenase or the complex 2, cytochrome BC1 complex or otherwise known as complex 3, cytochrome C oxidase or otherwise known as complex 4. In between these two complex, in these complexes, there are several electron carriers such as coenzyme Q, cytochrome C. Now, after that, there's a huge motor, which is known as the ATP synthase. Now, ATP synthase is super important for generation of the ATP, and we would look at it. So, there are two components here in this whole system. One is the electron transport chain, which comprises of all these four complexes, and the ATP generator, which involves the ATP synthase motor. Now we would understand about the electron transport chain in next 30 seconds. It's damn easy. And how the electron transport chain or transportation of the electron is involved with ATP generation, we would also understand that in next 30 seconds. So let's begin. The electron transport chain and the ATP generator ge generation machinery is a lot similar to a electric plant. Now in the electric plant, there would be a fuel combustion unit. And the fuel combustion unit is connected with a power generator. So the fuel would be uh, burned and using that energy, there would be some kind of rotor or some kind of converter which would convert that energy to an electrical energy. Similarly, in case of the electron transport chain, the fuel combustion unit is the electron transport chain. Here the electrons from NADH and FADH is transported across these complexes. Now these electrons are later on used in the complex 4 to reduce oxygen and to form water. Now while these electron transfer is going on, simultaneously there are protons which are pumped into the intermembrane space. And after several rounds of proton pumping, there is quite a lot of proton accumulation into the intermembrane space. That builds up a proton gradient. Now, this proton gradient has, or otherwise, it has a proton motive force inside it. So, using that proton motive force, the rotor or the ATP synthase or ATP generator can generate ATP. And that's how the energy in the proton motive force is converted into the bond energy of inside ATP and which is generated combining ADP and inorganic phosphate. So this is the clear-cut idea about the electron transport chain and the oxidative phosphorylation. So the electron transport chain is a relay system by which you, it is like relaying electron among themselves and ultimately reducing oxygen to water. And the ATP generation mach machinery is another component which is kind of dependent on electron transport chain because electron transport chain help to build the proton gradient and using that proton gradient or proton motive force, the ATP generator generates high energy bond in format of ATP and ATP is the currency for the cell. So that was clear about the electron transport chain and the oxidative phosphorylation. Now let us look at this whole process in a lot more details. So first, we come to the complex 1, which is otherwise known as NADH dehydrogenase. 
The name is pretty simple, right? NADH dehydrogenase. It looks like a dehydrogenation reaction. So definitely dehydrogenation reaction means an oxidation reaction where NADH would be oxidized to NAD. Now since it's an oxidation reaction, so electron would be removed and the removed electron from NADH is moved through this complex one and ultimately it moves to coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q is a mobile electron carrier which would transfer this to the next complex. Now if we look into the uh, mitochondrial matrix there are proton ions which would be pumped actually four proton ions would be pumped into the intermembrane space. Looking into the detailed structure of NADH dehydrogenase, we can see there is a membrane bound region and there is a region which is protruding outside from the membrane in the matrix. Now, NADH is converted to NAD. The electron which is ejected from NADH first goes to a flavin mononucleotide center. From there, it at least moves through seven iron sulfur clusters. And after moving through these iron sulfur clusters, these electrons are transferred to coenzyme Q. Now the coenzyme Q would diffuse through the membrane and take these excess this this electron to the next complex which is the cytochrome BC1 complex. Cytochrome BC1 complex has three major components cytochrome B, cytochrome C1 and the risky iron iron sulfur cluster. The CoQ gives this electron to this big complex. And the electron moves through cytochrome B, then cytochrome C, and ultimately it reaches the risky iron sulfur complex. In that risky iron sulfur complex, the electron is then transferred to cytochrome C, which is another mobile carrier of electron. Cytochrome C would transfer that to the next complex. But in the same process, four hydrogen ions are pumped to the intermembrane space. Cytochrome C takes this electron and gives it to complex 4. Complex 4 has three major components, three major subunits, and it has two heme moieties and a copper ion as well. Electrons are sequentially transferred through these centers and ultimately get combined with water, with oxygen to form water. So we can clearly see oxygen is reduced to water by the action of cytochrome C oxidase or complex 4 activity. In this process also four hydrogen ions are transported to the intermembrane space and we can clearly understand there are quite a lot of hydrogen ion or quite a lot of proton is now accumulated in the intermembrane space as if a proton gradient has been formed more protons in the intermembrane space and less proton in the matrix side. Now this proton gradient or the energy present in this proton gradient is utilized by the ATP synthase. Now these protons come downhill from this gradient through this ATP synthase, allow this ATP synthase motor to rotate and that mechanical energy is transformed into a chemical energy and stored inside the bonds of ATP and ultimately with the help of inorganic phosphate and ADP, ATP is produced and the energy in proton motive force or the proton gradient is stored inside the chemical in, in a chemical nature inside the ATP. Now the ATP synthase complex is pretty interesting and complex. It has several subunits and components but if we try to understand the mechanism by which it generates ATP it would be really sophisticated. So there are a lot of hydrogen binding sites in the transmembrane domains. Now while hydrogen is binding this transmembrane C ring rotates and as it rotates one by one hydrogens are released into the mitochondrial matrix. Now using that force the the head region of these uh, ATP synthase complex also rotate and that leads to production of ATP. One rotation can even produce three molecules of ATP as depicted in this animation. And that is how ATP is generated using the proton motive force, which is actually the proton motive force was built using the electron transport chain. 
and that is how inside the mitochondria ATP is generated. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory video about the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. I hope this video was informative as well. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But in a next video, I would really cover these topics in a lot more details. And this was just an introductory video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching. Do let me know in the comments how you like my videos. Bye.